Welcome. I am Raj, and these are my demons. This big guy here was intended for use as a demon prince, as a resin ultra forge war demon model that has been extensively converted. Most obvious feature is the Cthulhu type head here. So the war demon has a comedically small head and the tusks on this guy are actually the horns on the head of the war demon original model. So this is a boss man, so he needed more tentacles than anyone else. So I went to town on that. I use the same technique as I did for every other tentacle. And you can check that out in the Beast of Nurgle video for an explanation on that. Essentially, I just glued the finished tentacles into place and then built up the layers of green stuff to form his head here. The crown of horns on top was done in a similar fashion. So I rolled out some green stuff spikes, let him sit for a while, then gave him a curve, let him cure. And then the next day I glued them onto the head and then went over it with green stuff to blend them in. The other conversion is a staff this guy's holding. The original model had an ax and wasn't very imposing in my opinion, so I didn't want to use it. I didn't have a lot of time to get him finished for a tournament, so my intention was to go back and give him a more suitably badass ax or sword or something like that. But in the meantime, I was using this Demon Prince primarily as a sorcerer, so I thought a staff was appropriate and it's actually attached with a magnet. So I could use him as a wizard or a badass fighter and I would just switch out the weapon. Now I never did go back as of yet, but I would still like to do that someday. So the staff is a piece of brass rod and then I sculpted over it with putty, green stuff, to create the wood grain and then attach a bunch of bits at the end of the staff. He does have a little Nurgle symbol there. So those three balls, those are green stuff that were just rolled out into little balls. And then once they cured, I glued them to a staff. So a lot of green stuff work is a lot easier if you just do it separately from the model. If I was trying to sculpt on little balls attached to a staff like that, it'd be very difficult to get a nice finished result. So the skin was painted in the same way I painted the skin on my other demons. And you can go back to the Fury video if you want to learn how I did that. The armor plate was done in the same way I did the swords on my bloodletters slash plague bearers. You can go back to that video if you want to learn how to do that. In this one, I want to talk a little bit more about the basing. So originally these models were based on squares in a cave style basing with stalagmites stalactites, whichever one's coming up from the ground. I can't recall the proper name at this time. And bones and rocks and stuff like that. And they were basically sculpted from scratch and it took a long time to do those bases. And when the time came to put stuff on circles, I really did not want to do that again or try to reconfigure those bases to round. So I decided to go for something a little more simple and then it would actually give some contrast to the models as well. Overall, I thought these ended up a little monochrome when set up on the board, so I wanted to use the bases to give a little more contrast to that. So I went with these ruins style. So the blocks are actually insulation foam blocks cut with a Proxon Thermocut hot wire cutter, and you can see you can get really precise results with that. So I cut out a slew of tiny blocks and then some larger blocks for variation. And then to uh, make them even more ruined looking, I would sometimes smush the blocks in different ways. So you can press down on them pretty hard and they will pop back up slightly deformed. So the idea here is these demons came pouring out of some portal in a city by someone who summoned them and that uh, ended in the destruction of said city and now uh, these guys kind of traipse around the ruins of that city so the blocks were painted with a gray craft paint dry brushed with a really light gray kind of a cream almost and then i went back with secret weapon miniature washes and sort of tinted each edge a different color 
for the most part. So you'll see purples, greens, yellows. On some of these models, it's pretty subtle. On some of them, it's more stark. And for this guy, of course, I went a little more dramatic. So he's using his magic to pull up these blocks here in a nefarious fashion. So there's a wire in each of those columns there. And I just slid blocks onto it. And I went back over it with Mod Podge, several layers. And I think if there's a slight bit of shine, that's, that's what it's from. But they're extremely sturdy. They do bend a little bit when you push. You push the rod, so I've been playing it in 20 or 30 games so far and I haven't had any issues with it. So it's actually quite sturdy and I think it looks quite cool. I'm pleased with how it turned out on the Furies and the other models that I did as well. You're going to see a great example of this on the Plague Drones whenever that video comes out. As for the rest of the bases, it's just black dry brushed with the same grays and bleach bone that I used on the rocks to tie them together. Added more of a yellowish looking static grass and then I'm using Woodland Scenics leaf litter just to dust over a lot of everything and give it that nice abandoned feel. So that is how I did the bases. If you have any questions about those or this big guy in particular, please comment below and I'll get back to you. Hope you enjoy. Bye.